Have we any more? One or two more? No, that's it. Uh -huh. Loads of you this morning, aren't there? Hello. How are you? Yo, have you all had a good week? Yes. How many of you are off school next week? How many of the parents are happy about that? Oh, all right, fair enough. Happy, happy. You've got a tie on, and you're not going to school next week, and you've still got a tie on. Good for you. Good for you. Right, okay, so you've, you wear a tie in school, do you? Oh, I hate wearing a tie. I hate wearing a tie. You see, at the end of the working day, right, I clock out, and before I've even got to the door, I've taken my tie off. Oh, anyway, so my story goes back about 10 years, and it's about a group of friends and I, right? So about 10 years ago, a group of friends and I, we were out on our mountain bikes, right? And my friends are really great mountain bikers. I'm not, but they are, right? Some of them have even gone on and they've got careers now working in mountain bikes. Some of them, one of them even owns, runs his own bike shop now, right? But 10 years ago, they were very, very good and they liked to ride. We all liked to go out on our mountain bikes and cycle around. So one particular day we were out and we were having a great time messing around and doing jumps and things like that. We were, you know, behaving like children basically. And we always, even though, you know, we, we always do big jumps and ride fast and things like that, we're always quite careful. And there's a very simple rule, right? And that is that you look before you leap, right? Everyone, who's, who's heard the expression, look before you leap? Who's heard that, yeah? <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, right. So you look before you leap, right? And that means you never do anything without checking to make sure it's, you know, reasonably safe, first of all. So if you're going to go bombing down something, you, you make sure that there's no rocks or anything like that. You know, you, you just have a look before you leap. That's how we do it. So if you're going to do a jump, you make sure that, you know, you're not going to land on anything nasty or, you know, you look before you leap. Anyway, one day I forgot. I forgot to look before I leap. And we were, we just finished the day, so we had, and we were at the top of the hill and we were going to ride back down to the car park. And there was two or three different lines down, and because it's the end of the day, you always have a wee race, right? So we, we lined up, as you do, you know, and we went and we raced down this hill, and I thought, about halfway down, I thought, I'm going to take a shortcut. <laughs> Very clever. And I saw a wee, a wee line, and it went off down the hill and through a wee gap in the hedge. And I went straight into the car park through a wee gap in the edge. And I thought, I'm going to do this. This is going to be this. I'm going to get to the car park first. I'm going to win the race. So all of us on our bikes, and we started and we pedaled off down the hill as fast as we could, right? And I took my wee shortcuts thinking I was very clever. And I dropped down the wee drop and down the wee hill and towards the gap in the hedge. Now, does anyone know what barbed wire is? <laughs> anyone, anyone know what barbed wire is? Barbed wire is steel wire, right? It's electric. Oh, it's not electric, not necessarily. <laughs> this story gets worse and worse. <laughs> yes, it's a steel, steel cable with a lot of spikes on it, right? But the thickness, thickness of your finger, very strong and very, very dangerous, right? Very pointy, very pointy indeed. And I was coming down towards this gap in the hedge very fast. Yeah, you would. You could make your fingers bleed. You could you'd hurt yourself very badly. Well, I was bombing down towards this wee gap, and at the last second, the very last second, I noticed there was a single strand of barbed wire in this gap. So what did I do? I ducked as quickly as I could. I went, <gasps> <laughs> and there was a ping as it hit the back of my helmet, and I stopped in the car park and, whew, 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 <laughs> that wasn't good. And I, I turned around and the barbed wire was still going ding. <laughs> oh, that was close. I mean, really close, right? I think, I think that on that occasion, God really looked after me. I did something stupid and I got away with it, right? But you know, it made me think later, right? Do you think God just looked after me for like maybe two seconds on that day? The two seconds when I did something stupid? Yeah, exactly. God looked after me the whole day, right? And if I'd stopped, if I'd stopped and listened to him, if I'd thought properly, right? If I hadn't done something just on my own impulsiveness, God would have guided me better. I, I reckon that, 
you know, God will protect us when we get into dangerous situations, but if we talk to God, if we ask him about everything in life, he'll guide us away from them all together. And we won't end up in these situations where we just get out by the skin of our teeth, all right? So as you go back to your seats, I want you to remember, God looks after you in all the dangerous situations, right? But if you let him, he'll make sure you don't get into them in the first place altogether, all right? So as you go through your day, remember that. Remember, always pray to God. Always seek his guidance. And he'll look after you. Okay? Go back to your seats.